Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we are hanging out with Robbie again from Hiker Trailers. We are continuing our series and today's video is gonna be about the mid-range XL. So Robbie, I am so excited about this model, but knowing that you have five foot wide trailer standard now and you offer eight, nine, 10 feet for cabin length, what makes this trailer an XL? Well, it's, a, it's kind of an interesting story, Brian, because originally, before 2021, we only had the highway, the mid-range, and the extreme off-road. And there were a lot of options and features that didn't really work on the mid-range platform, but people didn't want to make the price jump or the, even the, the weight jump to the extreme off-road. So we kind of put our heads together and came up with, let's take the mid-range kind of platform with the frame and the design and make it a slightly more extreme off-roader. Yeah. So if you want to start with some of the differences, the first thing is going to be the tires. So you can see this is a larger tire, bigger rim. It's a 265 wide tire, so it's basically a full-size vehicle tire, especially in the off-road vehicles. Yeah. Um, and this is a tire, I'm looking at the bolt pattern, this is a Jeep bolt pattern. Yep, it's the 5x5 five five standard, um, which fits most American-made vehicles, especially Jeeps and that sort of thing. Um, and you'll also notice it's a little hard to see from your angle, but underneath there's a two inch lift kit that actually lifts the frame oh, to increase the ground okay. clearance. So this is like your mid range model, but it's lifted and it's right. got wider tires and you could drop some air pressure. These are real tires. Yes, these are not absolutely. like your camper tires rated for mm -hmm. 55 miles an hour. No, these this are, is a real legit yep, tire vehicle tires. So like we mentioned, there's so many size options. Obviously this one is pretty tricked out, but uh, this is just an amazingly uh, fine and refined camper yeah. that is capable of some serious off-roading. Right, and you know, talking about accessories, because we did the larger tires in the lift kit, this allows us to put the onboard water tanks on these, which is what's in the Pelican case there. You've got your instant hot water shower, the 21 gallon water tank mounted behind the axle. So you have the propane that will feed this hot water heater. Right. You have the water reservoir underneath. So the added clearance allows you to put how many gallons in there? 21 gallons. So 21 gallons is high as far as the industry. Yeah. Now, um, that's enough to go for days. Yeah. You start to learn how to conserve water and that's gonna keep you out in the woods for a right. long time. And we have accessories for water filtration and stuff like that so you can fill up from almost any source and extend that lifespan. Now, we're gonna do our video uh, on the extreme off-road. Correct. Now, we mentioned that that one is heavier. That one is really over the top. Yes, absolutely. But moving up from your basic mid-range model, we got to talk about what kind of vehicle somebody would have to own to be able to tow this. So we do start to drop off on some of the smaller vehicles. Yep. You're not going to pull it with a Prius. Some Subarus are definitely <laughs> going to go away. You know, it's high enough to drive a Prius underneath yeah, it. You're looking at probably on average around 2,000 pounds when it's fully loaded with gear. So um, you're talking about lightweight trucks or yep. good uh, Good solid crossovers, SUVs, SUVs, crossovers, yes. but on the smaller four cylinder, smaller yeah. side, you're, you're, you're going to start seeing Correct. Uh, a, a few issues with this. Now, right. obviously the exact weight depends on how you mod it yes. out, what accessories you get. That tongue box, for instance, is going to have a huge effect on tongue weight. Right. And that's actually one of the other differences when we redesigned the XL based on the mid range is we actually reinforced the A-frame and lengthen the tongue a little bit to give you more capability for options on the tongue. So this is an option that really interests me because I love your mid-range, but just this modification on the tongue is also going to give you a lot more of that bigger trailer feel when you're backing right. up, right. you're trying to get into places, it changes that radius. Yep. I bet this camper backs up like a longer camper. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, they're, the smaller ones definitely take a little bit of getting used to. Yeah. This and the extreme off-road, because of their, their overall length from tip to tail, it's a little bit easier for people that have done fifth wheels or something larger in the past. But, you know, again, they're so small that worst case scenario, you can get an arc jack on it and on the front and, you know, push it into spot by hand. Well, you know, and we're on a concrete floor, but you put a wheel on the bottom of one of these jacks and you're going to still be able to maneuver this monstrosity around at camp. Absolutely. Um, and what I really like is what you grab on this trailer always feels like you could pull from it. On some trailers, you're going to rip them apart. Sure. You want to yeah. get to a place. We don't have secure. stickers that say do not step here. Yeah, yeah. don't step yeah, yeah. here. Don't touch this for appearance right. only. So this is obviously an accessory. I bet it's going to become 
a hot accessory. Fridge this boxes is, are very popular because not only is it just a ginormous storage space, yeah. but it's the perfect spot to put a fridge slide, battery systems, whatever easy access. And then you, you don't sacrifice much because you have this nice heavy duty top that can be right. used. Now, um, there is a lot of things that we know people are gonna add to this trailer, but something that's starting to stand out about this model is this customer is actually getting some pretty decent off-road capability uh, off-grid capability. I see they got a great battery system and they have some onboard solar. Yeah, when it comes to the batteries and you know the solar, we've talked about it a little bit already. We'll do portable power station connections. We'll do onboard batteries, lithium, AGM. I mean, it can get overwhelming again, but we've kind of simplified it. If you get a mounted solar panel, it'll come with a solar charge controller, so you don't have to worry about getting your own or connecting it or anything. It's all kind of built into the package. And then anytime we add a battery package, we include an SAE solar port. That way, if you want to grab a regulated panel at any time to top off your battery, you can do it pretty easily. This is such, for a beginner, this, I don't want to go too far into this, but what I'd like to say is that this is such an honest, high quality approach. So many of the larger camper manufacturers are throwing stickers on reverse polarity plugs that are leading people into certain kits that aren't high quality, they're very, very expensive. And anyone who learns a little bit about the game knows that real, real solar readiness has to do with these like junction boxes, you can work with MC4s, right. you can plug a regulated panel into the side, like an all-in-one kit, or you can build your own system with yep. the components you yep. want. And You're priming people for that Yeah, we do, we do a lot of wiring prep, a lot of future proofing, um, because there are a lot of people like yourself that, you know, kind of start with the base and, hey, I've got an idea for this and I've got an idea for this. And we can do a lot of those for customers that aren't as handy, uh, but if you want to do it yourself, you know, we are a platform more than a trailer sometimes. So having this connection up here and working off MC4s, I'll be able to match different panels for series and parallel, combining portable kits with rooftop kits and working with the charge controllers mounted inside this trailer and no more uh, exterior, exterior wire loom and you know trying to do the things that you see on my right. camper. This is, this is really amazing. <laughs> So talking about the types of mounted solar that we do, um, we do a couple different sizes in both glass and kind of the flexible panels, sure. the, the plastic panels. So this is a ZAMP 100 watt hour glass panel. This is their new Obsidian series. So it's a really good size, very lightweight, um, doesn't affect a lot of your aerodynamics with the trailer. Sure. Um, and it's very easy for us to mount and waterproof so that it doesn't penetrate the roof. And for your solar nerds, if anyone is watching, I hope there's a few. This is a, a low profile monocrystalline panel. This passage underneath allows it to stay cool. The elevated temperature is what's going to drop your output on these things. So this is a setup that I could legitimately see lasting decades. Yeah, the only difference really between the two types of panels is the materials they're made out of because, you know, if you are doing rooftop storage with a sure. kayak yep. or, you know, longer items, there is a risk of cracking the panel or breaking the panel, but they are still pretty heavy duty. All it takes, you know, this one's dusty from the shop dust, yeah. but a, a little bit of polish, a little bit of wipe down, and it yeah. should last and you a the, very long and time. And the camper, I can reach it. I can yep. actually get a microfiber and take care of it. That's something that somebody has to learn to do anyway. Right. Now, this is a good glass panel. Obviously, I could put my own on here, but I see something different over here. Yeah, so this is the other option, and I think this one is slightly more popular. This is our flex panel. It's also 100 watts. This one is a little bit better um, just from the durability standpoint because they can take a little bit more of a beating compared to a glass panel. And with doing the extreme off-roading, twigs, branches, tr low-hanging, you know, trees and stuff, it, it's a little bit better. The only downside is, you know, it is going to probably wear out a little bit faster. Yeah. The plastic components will yellow over time. Yep. Uh, if you do start to scrape it up, you're going to lose some of the efficiency. Yeah, this is the name of the game, and being honest about this stuff can help people out. I mean, you might have a lower profile design, it might look a little nicer, you might make out better, uh, like you said, carrying roof racks and stuff, but because it's pinned down on the camper, it's going to be more susceptible to heat damage. These flexible silicone panels will have to be replaced in the life of this trailer, um, where some of the glass ones, like I said, will, will have gray hair or sure. no hair by then. Um, the options are great, and to see that you are either doing this for the customers 
or still giving them that junction box right. to just. And to combat some of those issues, we always do a white roof on our trailers Smart. because that will eliminate as much heat as possible, even though this is mounted onto it. And these are mounted very easily. It's just some heavy duty industrial double sided tape. Sure. That's the manufacturer's recommendation yes. of the yep. install. And then we go ahead above and beyond and put a little silicone around the edge. I see. Just that. to prevent that, water from damaging the tape. I saw at that all. you're doing that. And it, it also makes a little difference sometimes, not that it maybe on this trail or it wouldn't make a difference. It gets that lint wind edge. It right. really just makes a better job. Now, while we're up here, uh, this is for AC prep, huh? That's correct. We, we call it AC prep um, because portable units connect to it really well. Um, but they're also really good just passive vents. Yep. So if you are caught in a rainstorm, if you have a max fan like this trailer does, it runs in the rain because of its rain shroud. So you can just pop these open instead of having to open a window or crack your door. Yeah, so it gives a place for the air to draw in, but there's also climate right units. You could put a right. heat pump up here. This could right. be your heat source as well. And yeah. it could sit up here with a little protection and, yeah. and you're off to the race. Yeah, a little protection, little awning. Um, you know, climate right, zero breeze. There's a lot of portable ACs out there now, and most of these are pretty standard three inch diameter, basically PVC holes. That's right. So you can run to Lowe's, grab an adapter for whatever type of AC you might have and connect to it. Now, this one, you went with the spare tire on the front. Now, this trailer has a whole bunch of clearance. I'm sure this tire could go underneath, but if you are looking for that clearance, Here's a, right. a good option. To, we, uh, we have done a couple installs of these larger tires underneath, but we've discontinued that option okay. due to the ground clearance on the XL. It's, if it's you're kind paying of a, for the ground clearance, right. it, there's no sense taking right. it away. So we only do yeah. the spare on the front. That being said, because it is a larger size tire, depending on the tow vehicle, a lot of people can already use their vehicle spare instead of having another spare for the trailer. I, I am seeing that with the bolt patterns. You know, there's a lot of people, I know my I have a little bit larger of a, of a tire sure. on my Jeep, but it could still be used as a spare. Right. Um, so this this is all really solid design. I see this one has the lock and roll. Yes, absolutely. The lock and roll is definitely, like we said on the mid-range video, one of the more popular options. And the more off-road you're doing, the more you're going to see those on our trailers. That's pretty sweet. And uh, we mentioned this in the last video, but what I'm learning, you know, all this is an educational experience to me. I'm now meeting a ton of people that this isn't just about going to Moab. Right. I mean, this is nicer when you're pulling into a field, when you're backing into a campsite. This is a nice yeah. um, way to couple. Some people even get it and have told us they do it for theft protection because I've you only this, have yeah. the vehicle side receiver that will tow it. So instead of anybody with a two inch ball that can come along and take your trailer, you're not gonna be able to tow it without the correct vehicle adapter. Now, I've seen a couple different options on your trailers, but you're doing bolt on here. So you're giving people options. This isn't a welded, you don't have to come to fabricate something. You no. could change things around. We're moving to all bolt on hitches because the lock and roll and the two inch balls that we source, they're all identical as far as the bolt pattern, which makes it really easy for us to install. But also if you did ever wanna upgrade in the future, um, you know, future proofing our trailers to make it a platform to build off of, is one of those things that we're very conscious about. Uh, I'm loving it. So when we're looking at these hiker galleys, uh, they carry on from one model to the next. Yeah, a, lo a lot of them are gonna look similar because you know one of the things that is kind of unique to us is the, everything on the box and some of the stuff that you can get on the box yep. are kind of universal across all the models because it works the same chassis. way. It's that chassis, it's the right. moving parts right. that change on these. Um, but obviously, you know, some of, there's a, still a lot of modifications yes. that go on, and there's some customization here. This model has that pass-through. Right. I love that. It also has these two cubby pass-throughs. I could be back here and mm -hmm. like hand breakfast inside. Right. Both of these are the standard. Uh, this is the standard depth. 17 inch depth on this one. Correct. You can go 24. Right. Um, you can do the 24 on the nine or the 10 foot version. Otherwise, if you try to do it on an eight foot, you'd end up you'd in the be, window. You'd be really short. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, the slide outs are nice, gives you a little extra workspace, or, you know, some people even put cutting boards and stuff here. And then on the bottom here, most people are going to end up putting that clothes off underneath to separate the galley from the cabin. Ah, uh, um, gotcha. That way it's kind of a separate storage area. But there are also people that leave it open. That way they can, you know, fit small pets or just even tuck their feet under if they're a taller person, but are sticking Perfect. with an eight foot yeah. for budgetary reasons. Their partner's reason. snoring and they right. can climb into the gallery. <laughs> right, Excellent. yeah, exactly. Now you have the receiver hitch. That's becoming standard. Yep. I love that. That's gonna be, there are so many things from ladders to tables. Yeah. 
that come off at yep. grills. Like this racks. is this is going to be one of the areas where you see some innovation yep. from people. Now you have a rear power center on this one. This one has an AGM battery. Correct. So if they are using like a power station for their major loads and they keep the cycle life on this one low, it could last 10 years. As yeah. long as you're just using it as like your travel battery. Yeah, a, a lot of times, you know, we, we do a 35 amp hour or a 60 amp hour AGM. Mm -hmm. You know, the smaller one is really just to run your 12 volt accessories, your lights, your fan, you're good yep, to go. And, yes, and this and this is one that, like I said, you could put like a little solar on this mm -hmm. one and handle the basics, especially if you have portable power stations to right. supplement. Um, otherwise, you know, there's still some people that, uh, require some really cold weather charging and stuff. Correct. Uh, but you could put a lithium battery back here as well. There's right. packages. It, especially if you did put it in the rear galley and were to heat the trailer, yes. you'll get that passive heating through all the different, you know, pass throughs and the, the cubby holes to, to a, keep the battery it's warm. It's a really good point. So this is something that you would uh, modify out yourself. There's a coolers and fridge compartments on the front, but you could still put one back here. Mm -hmm. You put your boxes and you set yourself up. Um, this would be a good spot to even put your cooktop, your clearing right. sides. So uh, basic Spartan stuff back here, but just enough to let people do what they want to do. Right, and you know, we'll put other components in here as well. Um, this one has a water tank on it. So our water pump and our water pump controls are gonna be inside, which helps making winterization of the trailer easier. I did, okay, so yeah, the water pump on the inside, that's another area that we could even heat if we had to, Correct. you know, and yes. uh, does this one have, this one has a 20? 21 gallons. 21 gallon underneath. reservoir. So uh, pretty neat stuff here from Hiker, and I've already, while I'm doing this, I always have ideas of how I'm setting mine up, right? Right, so. absolutely. <laughs>
you start picking colors and before you know it, there's lights, accessory lights. Mm -hmm. The beautiful uh, birch insides on these things can be accessorized and right. all of, I mean, water reservoirs, yeah, uh, the I sky's mean, the limit. That's a perfect way to describe it. And uh, a general rule of thumb, if somebody is interested without having to go through the build, if you take the starting price and then multiply it by 1.5, that's probably that's what, what the most price of us are doing. But for someone like me, because I'm a total cheapskate, sure. I could get this thing for nine and start as I go to do yeah. these accessories myself. Yeah. One thing we've we've noticed in talking to our customers over the last few years is, you know, this kind of camping and extreme off-roading and overlanding is becoming a hobby yeah. for a lot of folks. So people aren't signing up to golf courses anymore. Every year they're gonna, hey, I wanna get the latest and greatest, or I wanna get a couple more things to trick out my tow vehicle and my trailer and my camping gear. So, you know, we've so you already can done that. So you whittle away at those things. Yeah. And we also know, I won't, I won't fib about it, by the end, I'll have spent $30,000 <laughs> doing what I could have paid 20 for. Right. Well, know, we so. offer financing, so <laughs> if, you wanna, if you wanna spend the 30, you can and make it easier on yourself. But, you know, our, our team is very well versed in helping you pick what's important first and then sure. what you can upgrade later in the future. Excellent. So I hope you guys are enjoying this stuff. It was, uh, I'm a long ways away from home, but it's been great hanging out with these guys and checking out these trailers and trying to provide some content that helps people out. Whether you want this trailer or not, some of these modifications and hearing about, you know, how these things are birthed from a design perspective should be able to help you no matter what camper you have. Yeah, yeah, we're not trying to sell trailers. Our trailers will sell themselves because they're so versatile. And, you know, we always say it's an honest trailer at an honest price. Yep. So that's what so, we're trying to hey, do here at Hiker. The choice is yours. You make up your own mind. But I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you for doing this with Thank me. Thank you, Brian. And uh, you guys know what to do. You got to hit subscribe and do all that stuff to help me out because I make videos like this. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.